guessing that there probably are more skills that I don't have. Now what we're going to look at is we're going to go through the PAL deck. I have captured, I've encountered 135 different PALs. I've captured all 135 PALs. We're going to go through all of them right now. So land ball is one of the first ones you can get. You can see here it's handiwork one, transporting one, farming one. One of the first guys you can get. Tells you in the tutorial basically to get the, the land balls. Then you have the Cativa. I'm sorry if I pronounce these names wrong. They have the Chikipi and the Lift Monk. If you're looking for any guys in the beginning for your base, as you're building your base, the Lift Monk is definitely a high one to get because it's planting, handiwork, lumberjack, as well as gathering. How would you do you just uh, de, de escalate a fight between Lambo and Katia. I don't know how you would, uh, I don't even know what that word is. De, de escalate? How do you de escalate a fight between a Lambo and a Katia? If they're fighting each other, you just capture one. I'm gonna guess if you're fighting them in the wild. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, the, I don't understand the question in full, sorry. Box parks? Uh, is one of the first like fire type of guys you can get it's for like if you're trying to do kindling and things like that kindling so if you're trying to do um, cooking you need kindling and or if you're trying to smelt iron or other things like that you're going to need some kind of fire type of guy so that's for the first guy you can mainly get the duck I haven't found the duck that great because compared to the duck the pingolet is actually better because it's got handiwork transporting watering and cooling, so cooling things down. Uh, but if you're looking for something just as watering, handiwork, and transporting, I guess it is good, but they're, they're much more rare to find. The Sparket is a great pal to get at the very beginning. It's got really fast casting abilities. He's electric. You're going to need the electric organs in the beginning to be able to build things. Great one to catch uh, and to use as a fighting type of pal at the beginning. The Tansy is a great one to catch. As you can see, it's got planting, handiwork, lumberjacking, transporting, and gathering. Great for base, as well as other abilities, such as he can carry around a little rifle. The Ruby is another one you can catch as well, but there's also in a different area. Now, for those that are also watching too, you can also click this Habitat button right here if you've caught enough of them, and you can see where they are actually, where their habitat are in the world. We'll just come over here and just do a quick one based on the Lamb Ball. Lamb Ball's there, Kativa, Chickpeas, Lift monks are here, fox parks, the duck, the sparket, tansy, a rudy, pinglet, and so on and so forth. We'll go over the habitats quickly after we go over all the guys. The pangolet is the handiwork, transporting, watering. Highly recommend pangolets. The pecking is the first type of boss guy that you should aim for to get for your base. With watering too, super important for watering, for milling, for everything else, handiwork too, mining too, because you're going to need the mining too to be able to get spheres. One of the best guys to get at the very beginning, he's level 15 boss. You can find the level 15 boss right here. Highly recommend the pet king. Highly recommend getting him probably as soon as you can for bases and collecting as many as you can. So highly recommend the pet king. Jolt Hog is another one of those electric organ guys. Kind of rare to find. The Jolt Hog Cyst is also kind of more one rare to find. You can only really find them in dungeons or from actually buying from other different pal guys. Uh, you can find them in the wild. They're a little bit harder to find. The Ghost Moss is for planting, for farming, for you're going to need food for your actual guys. Now this one is a very not described a lot, but the Vixie is probably the number one guy you should get now that I learned about it. The dig here ability is important. So I'm gonna hit on this a little bit more. The Vixie, when you get them, they dig up, you see these pal spheres? This is what the Vixie digs up. They dig up arrows and they dig up pal spheres. So if you just leave your Vixie in your base, you can collect a whole bunch of these pal spheres and you can just have them in your base with this herding ability and the farming ability, required farming. And the Vixie will just pump out and dig up a whole bunch of these little pal spheres. Amazing guy to have at the beginning Highly recommend. Here's their habitat. You can see they only spawn in the small little tiny area. Highly recommend getting a Vixie. You're just starting out the game tutorial. You spawn kind of right up here. And the Vixies spawn anywhere within there. You just look for a Vixie. Or multiple Vixies. Hoocrats are only night. You can see right here. It switches to nighttime. And you can see there's nighttime between daytime. Hoocrats is kind of interesting. Only can see them at nighttime. 
Tfant is just for watering. Didn't really see they have multiple different abilities. Depressor was good for mining and handiwork and transporting, moving a bill and moving things around. Cremus is kind of neat, cute. Basically, if you're looking for wool. Daydream is an important guy to get if you're trying to solo the game by yourself. You get the Daydream necklace and you can have multiple of these guys out and they shoot out this heat seeking shadow wall. Really, really cool, really neat. First Roar is one of those guys for mining, easy to find them, can mount up, really cool. Haven't really found that many Noxes in the wild, but they can do gathering. Their ability when fighting together applies dark damage to the player's attack. That's kind of cool because you can blind guys with dark damage. Fudder I actually found nice for mining, handiwork, and transporting. It's underground, kind of like a hermit hamster, underground periog. I don't know what you want to call it. Kilimari you can find in dungeons. You can use them as a glider as well. The Mao and the Mao cysts, they dig up gold coins uh, for the farming is what they do. I've never really found too much use for the gold coins because you can get more by just defeating bosses over and over again and selling their valuables. So, but they're cool if you're just trying to idle get gold and get money in the game. Celery, I've never really used so much. It can be used as a glider. Uh, you can find them around the water. You can easily get pal fluids from them as well. You got the dire hall, which is really cool. People ridden, nice fast mount. Never really used it in the beginning. I went straight for a nightwing. Tukotoko, or whatever you want to call it, they produce gunpowder. So if you hunt these guys down, you get a bunch of gunpowder. And it can be used as an egg launcher too, if you get that ability. Floppy, uh, you kind of find these guys in the mid game. They have a lot of different abilities. I never really found too much use for a floppy because you can just do the same thing with a tansy or something else. But they're cute and they go around and they do a bunch of other things. The Mazarani is, he produces milk. It's a big cow, basically. So if you're looking to provide food, uh, Mazarani is one of those guys who can provide food. The Bristilia is, also has a whole bunch of different abilities, mid game type of things that you find, can do things for medicine production. I never really use them so much. Godfin and Godfin and Ignis. These guys, uh, they have watering and they have kindling. And they also, when you have them on your team, increases players' attack power. So you just have to be in your team to increase your attack power. So if you're trying to make yourself more stronger, you can have these guys just in your team to increase your attack power. These guys you also find mid to later game. Um, I haven't really found too much of use for them but they're just these little hanging eyes i think that this one was really really hard to find because you can only find this one at nighttime in the end game type of area up here these were really these were the last two guys i catch was the hangu assist and then something not this one but the way down below i'll show you the hardest guy it took me to find the masanda um just mushrooms when you defeat him but not really that great, but the Masanda Lux is an excellent guy to have for your base for electricity. He's a boss guy only that I have found. I don't think you can actually capture him, except for maybe breeding him and whatnot. Masanda Lux is right here, 31. You can catch him way early. Super easy catch. When you hit him with Poison Blast, he bounces up. When he's floating in the air, he doesn't fall down, so you just keep hitting him with Poison Blast. Wally Pops are good for giving you cotton candy for food for your base. Other than that, that's the only thing they're really good for is the cotton candy part. The cap tree is good for also giving you berries. I've never really used them too much, but I like the planting ability as well as berries. So that's that's good in that sense. This guy's good at giving you wool. I haven't seen any other reason, but at the time you get one of these guys, you probably won't need wool that much anymore. The Agathy Deer is an excellent first Pokemon, first, sorry, first pal you can catch. The Agathy Deer is probably one of the first Guys, I highly recommend for boss fights and everything else. Decathy Deer Terra, you can only find on the tiny little island over here. Haven't really found it so much. This one's just neutral, this one's ground. Highly recommend the Ekathy Deer. It has a unique ability where it charges and hits them up in the air. Basically stuns them for a bit. Great, great first type of a very offensive pal to help you out. You don't have to use them, but I found it very, very useful. The Nightwing is one of the first flying type of pals you can get with a mount. The other nice thing with the Nightwing, because I do want to hit on this, is the Nightwing can actually fly through certain caves. So if you take a Nightwing, and I finally got a few with Swift on them. If you take a Nightwing, you place it with a Frostilian. 
and you travel to a cave, the Nightwing can fly through the cave, as well as fly through dungeons. So for those that are wondering, and I probably shouldn't do that, I should probably just keep going through all the pals, but the Nightwing, I do want to showcase this, we'll just go through the pals once we get through the cave, is when you get on a Nightwing, you see how much smaller it is? I've tested all the different flying mounts at the level 45 that I'm at. Now, obviously, I can't fly in a Frostilian or anything like that because I'm not level 50 because I purposely am not trying to level up. But I'll show you how to level up fast, too, as well. Now, even though the Nightwing has very little stamina and very little... Uh, doesn't fly as fast as all the other guys, what a Nightwing can do, so still getting a swift one is important, is you see these mine shafts, you ever wonder why you couldn't fly through them? Well, guess what? The Nightwing can. The Nightwing is one of the few guys, as you can see, you can fly through here. Where all the other flying guys, they're too big. They do not fit. So getting a fast Nightwing is actually really cool. For example, I'll show you. If I try to fly around with my Vanny Worm, you watch, the Vanny Worm would and should get stuck at one of these points. You see right here? I can't go any further. And the Worm is actually pretty small. Only the Nightwing is the one that can fly through. So if you're going through dungeons and other things like that, uh, that's where if you still want to have a flying mount that can fly and do things, the Nightwing can basically do most of all of it. Now there are a few caves. There are a few caves that you are not able to do the Nightwing. Very, very few. But the Nightwing is one of the few guys that can fly through it. Okay? Rib Bunny, so so. Incarn, Nim, um. They do kindling, handiwork, transporting, and mining, but if you're gonna get one, get the Incarn knocked. The main reason why knocked guys are good is they never fall, they never have to sleep. They don't ever have to sleep at nighttime, so during nighttime, they'll just keep going. And they'll do handiwork, transporting, and mining, but they does not have any fire. See, this one has kindling and this one doesn't, so it's a big difference. Cinnamoth is for planting. Actually, I kind of like that. Now that I learned about that, but only two for planting. Uh, when you get these guys late game, Lumberjack and Kindling, there's so many other guys that are better for doing that. T-Mud has watering, mining, and transporting. This guy's a nighttime only. You can only find them at nighttime. Find them in these areas. I don't really care for them that much. All they do is look scary. Then you got the Lee's Punk. Again, these guys, you get basically end game type of stuff, but they don't have the abilities to match. The Loop Moon is amazing because when you put the Loop Moon in, this is a nighttime guy only. You can only find them at nighttime. You see, there's no daytime. You only find them at nighttime. But the main reason why these guys are amazing do handiwork too, and they only do handiwork. So they only do crafting. So they're amazing to do for if you're just trying to craft or build things, like you're trying to build more spheres, pal spheres. When you're trying to build a whole bunch of pal spheres and you want guys just dedicated for it, well, the Loop Moon. This guy is the, one, the guy that does it, and he'll stay up all night. So during nighttime, you switch out your guys a team for Lut Moons when everybody's sleeping, and they'll go into crafting for you. Gale Claw is really, really neat for its glider ability. You actually glide really fast, and it moves forward. Really cool. Fudalo. If you're looking for another guy to replace your Chan Zs later on, the Robin Quills kind of do near it all, and their food consumption is super low. So if you're trying to do base management, you're trying to do it very, very well, not just the, what their work abilities are, it's also what their food consumption are. The Robin Quill is great at for base and not consuming a ton of food. In fact, and most of the guys that are people looking with legs and arms kind of are really, really good for base building and base um, base management. The Robin Quill Terra you can only find in the actual habit. Well, I guess you can find them there. I didn't really care for them too much because they don't have planting. That's the only difference between Robin, Tuk, Robin Quill and Robin Quiltera. Is one's ground and grass, and one is just grass, but this one does planting, so I think this one's better. The Gorats are good for bones. When you're in mid-game, end-game stuff, bones are important for making cement. So when you're looking for them right here, they are their bones. You can see them right here on this island. This is where they spawn, and they are great for farming to collect a whole bunch of bones so you can get cement. So you can create higher level spheres. And not just for spheres, spheres, but for everything else. They're great for collecting bones. So much so that I even mark the map right here. I go to this waypoint here, Mosandra Forest. 
and I go anywhere around this area and I look for those garats and I farm them. The second reason why I mark this area right here is for PAL fluids. These right here. PAL fluids can only be farmed by actually farming guys. And those are the two best areas I found for farming bones and farming PAL sphere, PAL fluids. Bee guards are great for creating honey as well as they consume very little food. And they do all of these actions. I highly recommend a bee guard if you're doing farming and you're looking for just crate honey, which honey is better than cotton candy, I personally feel, and better than any of the other foods that are produced automatically. And they have great defense. Get a bunch of bee guards, level them up, stick them in your base, and they will defend your base as well as produce honey for your entire base. Those bee, which is the queen bee, does not do that. But the queen bee stats will increase the more bee grades you have on your team. Now I know somebody said, and I know there's like some other videos out there where they say the sweep and the sweep. Well, the LZB does the same thing. When fighting together, stats will increase the more bee grade you have in your team. So when you put out the bee, if you have a whole bunch of bee guards and the LZB in your team, you can do the same thing for grass compared to ice. Ice is, is definitely better because it freezes guys. We'll get to that a little bit later. But the LZB can do just like the SWE does, except you have more valuable B guards in LZB. The Grintail, I didn't find as interesting as all the other guys, but it's a Grintail. The SWE is just a weaker version of a Sweepa, but it has the ability where if you have the SWE in your team, Sweepa's stats will be increased. But I guess that's to increase the more SWE you have in your team. So it kind of almost doubles. Yeah, it's the same thing. Bee guard deals a bee compared to the SWE and Sweepa. They do the same thing. The Sweepa you can ride though. The Sweepa is a ridden mount. Where the Elza B is not a mount that you can, you can't mount the Elza B. But a Sweepa you can ride. So you can ride them as well as have all the SWE and the Sweepa in there. And you can do a ridiculous amount of damage for with the SWE and the Sweepa. If you're looking for where they're habitat is you can see right here here's the habitat of where you can collect these guys really really neat the chillet is kind of the first dragon guy you can get as a boss they also spun up here but the chilla is chillet is something you get as a boss kind of first dragon one that can also be ridden i didn't get to use it so much because i kind of skipped over that area in the beginning but it's probably one of the first great dragon guides you can get in the beginning ice dragon basically this guy does electricity, can be ridden as well. You kind of find them near the late end game. Uh, but I found the other electric guy better because this one has Lumberjack and electricity. Where this one up here, Masada Lux, he has three transporting. So when you're trying to organize your base, this guy can help carry things around when he's not providing electricity. And although lumbering doesn't seem like much, I'm going to show you why lumbering is actually still important in the game. This is the Foxil. Foxil was end game type of stuff that you find, but it, what it does as well on your team increases the attack power of Ice Pals. So if you're trying to make your Ice Pals more powerful, you can stack these guys in. It's kind of a neat feature. Pyrin, uh, I didn't really find too much ability for this one. It just applies fire damage and can be ridden. This is a nighttime one, which should be fire and ridden. It does kindling and lumber, but when it comes to kindling and lumbering, I found a guy that's far more important than getting these guys. Render Rocks, I never got to use them. They got them near late game. Kind of cool looking. It reminds me of Ekathy Deer, it's just the ice version of it. So that's probably what it is. I didn't get to use it too much. The Rayhound is does electricity. Again, I didn't use this one too much either. Can be ridden, that's interesting. Kitsune, I didn't find till way, way later. It's a nighttime only guy. Really rare to find them. They only spawn in this tiny little area right here. So when I finally found a Kitsune, I was like, oh, okay. And then I finally figured out they only spawn in this tiny little area. So really rare, really hard to find. But what they can do is they're unaffected by color and heat when ridden with this pal. So that's kind of neat. The Daisy is the same thing like the Daydream. It follows you around with a, da with a Daisy necklace and does a lightning strike from underground. Hits them. And very easy for other pals to dodge. But you can have multiple daisies in your team and out of them out, just like the, the daydreams. So, kind of neat. Lunaris. Uh, this one's got three handiwork. This is a neutral type of pal. It's got interesting abilities. What its real ability is, is increase your Merrick's carrying capacity. So when I want to carry more things, it just had a bunch of Lunarises in your team. The Dinosaur is something you can find very early. I found that these guys, when you find them very, very early in the game, 
literally at the beginning of the game because they spawn near the beginning of the game. When you get these guys, they're great tanks, great for boss boss fights in the very beginning of the game. Highly recommend having one or two in your team when you're fighting bosses. To assign them Lux is end game type of one because you can only find them here in this desert area. They are cool, but I've never used them because there's so many other guys that are better at that point by the time you reach that point. Surferent has watering. Um, by the time I had a Surferent just dedicated for watering, I already had Dormantide, so uh, didn't really see so much. But the Surferent Terra, this guy, the ground one, ridiculous amounts of damage. They only spawn up here, they're hard to catch. Uh, but when I was fighting them, they really tore up my guys when I was just trying to catch one. So be careful when you're trying to catch this guy because they're high level and they do a lot of damage. This guy's a nighttime only. You find them over here in the ice area. The Mara Wraith was very interesting to catch. Um, not too hard. Just kind of as a Mara Wraith. It looks like it has wings, but just, it doesn't, doesn't fly. Digatos. Everyone says the mining. I didn't really care for the mining for three on this one. Like, if I was going to use mining, there's so many other guys I would use for mining. But the Digitos is, you can catch them. They're interesting. Catch them here, catch them here. They're an interesting guy. They have three mining, but I think other guys are better for mining, personally. The Tombat was an amazing guy to get. It's a nighttime only pal. You can catch them all over the place at nighttime. Really hard to find, even though they're glowy. But the reason is that these guys are a value is they have the ultrasonic sensor. When you use ultrasonic sensor, it will help you find other pals that are around. So if you're gonna look, if you're trying to hunt and you're trying to do like me and trying to catch them all, now I caught all these guys way earlier. I'm sorry, I'm doing this video later. I, I kind of actually stopped playing, and I'll explain more in my review of Pal World. Uh, I kind of stopped playing Pal World because the end game content's not there. It's still early access. We'll go over that a little bit more a little bit later. But Tombat is a great guy to have if you're trying to collect them all. The Lovander is another guy that's really cool. But if you're going to get a guy that has this ability, which is fighting together, grants the player basically life steal. You life steal, the love ender life steals, and it's neutral. I highly recommend not this guy, but I actually highly recommend when we get to him. It's a different kind of guy, which is the. Let me just show you. This boss right here. I highly recommend the Felbat. The Felbat does the same thing the love ender does, but it's far more built for combat. Because of the, his animation, because of how he actually fights and attacks, he dodges a lot. Highly recommend the Felbat, not over the Lovander. Lovander just stand there and take hits, and when he fights, just stands there. So, not as powerful. The Flame Bell is great for if you're trying to get Flame Organs. So if you're short on Flame Organs, you capture a Flame Bell, just stick them in the farming, and it'll create Flame Organs for you. you can, usually I cut them over here. That's the first one I caught. But it looks like they also spawn over here. You can't even go to this area unless you have Fire Armor. This is a really high level area, so don't go there. This area you can make it to, but it takes a long time to get there. So if you're looking for Flame Orions, the Flame Bell will just start pumping them out for you. Vanny Worm, the end game, mid game flying mount. And the main reason why is it's got a ton of stamina. Its food consumption is nowhere near as much as other flying mounts. It flies at a good amount of speed. There are definitely other flying mounts that are faster, but the food consumption of them are ridiculously high. So if you're looking for the first one to go for, Vanny Worm is great because it's a fire and dark. What that means is if you're fighting other pals that are fire or other pals that are dark, the Vanny Worm will take less damage. Where if you have other different flying mounts, for example, this one, ice, because it's ice, it's going to take more damage from fire or other different type of guys. Where if you have one that's just straight fire, it's going to take a ton of damage from air, from water type attacks. Or if you have the beacon, it's going to take a ton more damage from ground attacks, which you fight a lot of different ground guys. So there's a lot of different flying guys, and the Vanny Worm really does a good mix of a lot of different ones because it's fire and dark, as well as it gets fire and dark abilities. So uh, I recommend the Vanny Worm for mid to late game stuff. End game stuff, I'm going to recommend something else. But for mid end game stuff, Vanny Worm is a highly recommended mount. You get one that's a swift, highly recommend you'll like it. The Bushi is an amazing guy to get at the beginning very hard to capture as a boss you can capture the bushies all spawn down here but if you're looking for a bushy early which you can get early there is a boss version of the bushy and he is right here next to this web point and this boss version when you get them the main reason why he is so amazing just like the pet king he's got two kindling he's got three lumbering 
handiwork, transporting, and gathering. These are amazing abilities for a lineup. And he's got amazing abilities because he's got all three elements for abilities when you first catch him. So he's amazing at defending as well as attacking. Great, great, great guy to have. So this guy you get at the end, it's a flying electric type of uh, Nightwing, I would say. Very, very similar. Three transporting everything else. It's because food consumption is high, so be aware of that. Ragnarok as well, just a fire version. Kindling, transporting, really great if you're just trying to do end game kindling and firing, can't find anything else, but its food consumption is high. Keatris is something that you can find in the nighttime only, and they spawn over here. You can also find the boss version as well. I didn't really find them that useful as the other ones. The Wixen as well, super hard to catch early game because fire damage is ridiculously powerful at the early game. When you do catch them, they do amazing damage. Never really use them too much, but kind of nice. The Verdesh is the one of the best guys even I still use all the time. The Verdesh is something you catch as a boss level guy. He's level 35. You can catch him early. It's very hard, but he's right here, sealed of the realm. Verdesh is right here. Highly, highly recommend Verdesh because of the planting, handiwork, lumbering, transporting, and gathering. If you're making your base around food and you need food, the Verdesh is the guy to do the planting and the gathering for you. As well as they're great for defense as long as you change off at least one of their abilities because I don't like the seed machine gun. I don't like up close. They're not good at defending. If they run up close to them, they get themselves knocked out. So definitely change at least one of the abilities. Valet. I never really use them too much, but they have poison abilities as well as grass abilities. So kind of neat. This guy I highly, highly recommend getting. Boss guy that you can get pretty early as well. This guy you can get. Uh, they also spawn up in the ice area as well. But you can get this boss guy right here. The main reason why the Siblex is really, really important to get is the Siblex, once you actually get them, they produce high quality cloth when farming. So you just stick one inside your base and you automatically produce high quality cloth. Just like that. Now the Elphidran, I didn't really care for this dragon so much, uh, but if you're looking to catch him, they're all the way down here. Really hard to catch. I just bought mine from the black market. I did catch a couple over here when they do. They spawn very, very rarely. Now, the one other guy that I didn't get is there's another Alpha Dredran that's a dark mode. I've never found a dark one. From my, from my understanding of what I've seen, you can only breed them. So there is 137 different pals. I've only caught 135 because I never bred to get an actual dark one. Uh, but the dark one compared to this one, I don't think is going to be that much different. The kelps, uh, it does not require too much food. It is a rideable mount, but because it's just dragon, uh, it's not as good as the other one that can protect against fire and dark. Where this one only even dragging its dragon, there's no real actual defense for it. The Kelpsy um, increases the attack power of water pals. It's just for pal fluids and the food. Same thing like Kelpy Ignis. The Azure Robe, this one is can be ridden as a water mount. You can catch them. I don't really count too much for them. The watering ability is great. Can be captured as a boss. Not too much more use besides that, besides the watering ability. This guy right here, you catch him endgame, but honestly, I never really even used them. But when fighting together, Dragon Pell drop more items when defeated. That's kind of neat. Interesting. The Blaze Howl is... I actually use the Blaze Howl Knocked. The Blaze Howl, this one goes to sleep during the nighttime. Or the Blaze Howl Knocked, this one fire and dark. Does not sleep at night. So if you're looking for kindling and lumbering, which is why I have my, my Blaze Howl knocked in there. It does three kindling, three, two lumber, and it never goes to sleep at nighttime. It still can sleep if it gets, you know, overworked or, or tired, but it doesn't have to sleep at nighttime. It just keeps going. Uh, these guys just are dumb looking dinosaurs. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> and this guy's the electric guy. This guy has straight electricity, but one transporting. He's not as good as a Masanda Lux. I like the Masanda Lux far better. If you're looking for planting, I even use these guys. This guy is you can get early, early game, huge tank. You can get them really early right here because you start over here, right? And you get over here. Highly recommend capturing these guys. And then I even still use them now late game because it's just the three planting. The three planting for your planting, for your actual farms and everything. Great, great. And they're great for defense. And they got a ton of hit points. So if you're fighting bosses, I highly recommend one of these guys in your lineup because they're very easy to catch early game. 
This guy was... There's no habitat for them. It's a boss only catch, but it has watering. So if you're looking for dedicated watering, you can't get a Tormentide. You can get this water guy, which I believe was... Somewhere down here. Right here. He's right here. The Bonchari Aqua. And this is the entrance. You enter here and you go through the cave and then they spawn right here and they're great for watering. So if you're looking for just a straight water guy, this guy would be pretty good for it. I didn't get him till way late end of the game because I was just trying to catch them all. And then I got that one. Patilla is great for planting and whatnot, but not as good as this guy that's just dedicated for planting. The Patilla, when you have him in your base, tends to try to do handiwork and gathering stuff. Over planting, even though planting's three. That's why a dedicated guy just for planting is better when you're just trying to do farming. Well, this guy was amazing for mining. I recommend these guys way over those turtles. These guys, but you they're literally mid-game, end-game stuff. You catch them over here. But these guys are amazing at kindling and mining because they three and three. Really, really great. And they're good at base defense as well. This guy didn't catch to way, way later. Mining and cooling if you have that type of issue and your cooling ability. The King Pacha. Useless pal. Uh, even their attack abilities are useless. King Pack Catch is just another bigger cold version of it, but end game stuff. I, 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 it's totally, completely useless. Don't get them. Uh, get them to collect them, but I don't use them at all. The Mammarist, uh, number one first big boss if you can catch them. I don't recommend trying to catch the Mammarist, this boss one, first. The Vis boss one where I mean right here, level 38, super hard. But you can catch a normal Mammarist very easily. They spawn all over the place. You can get a level 30 Mammarist real easy. It's fighting another Mammarist, or you see it fighting each other, and it gets its health down low. You just throw a, ball, a couple balls at it, and eventually you're going to catch them. Highly recommend them. Great tanks, great for boss fights, many other things. The Mammarist assist, you can see right here, you can get them too way later in the end of the game i don't even know why you would still use a memorist at that memory assist at that point because there's so many other guys that are better but early game awesome guy to use early game mid game this guy you only get in your late game stuff and by the time you get him i don't know what you would use him for wumbo um you don't get them to way way late and even when you do you get handiwork three lumbering three transport four i guess transport four is kind of cool Cooling 2. Once a baton is the exact same thing, except it's just no cooling. Once a baton has cool things that help you carry things, help your carrying ability. The War Sect is a great guy to have for uh, defense. When fighting together, increases players' defense and applies fire damage to players' attack. That's amazing. As well, it has 3 transporting, 3 lumberjacking. Uh, but I mainly use it for attacking. So if you're looking for another boss to upgrade from a Memorist, the War Sect is pretty cool with grass and ground. Pretty neat guy to have. Fangalope. Never use them. No reason to use them when you get them. You can't get them until the end game anyways. So they were interesting. Fell back. You can get them early in the game. Number one best offensive pal you can get. It looks like I'm already freezing, which is bad. Let me get out of this cave real quick. I didn't put on my other armor, so I need to actually get out of here. So I'm doing that. Sprint, sprint, sprint. Not good, not good. It's night time. There you go. Nice thing about riding one of these guys is you can see I'm not cold anymore. So I guess we can keep going. Let's get back to over here. Where's the waypoint? Should be up here somewhere. You can see this flying mount I use all the time. It's got tons more stamina. I'm literally sprinting the whole time. I just wish I got a swift version of him. It's the last one of the last ones you can get around the level 40-ish mark. Alright, let's go back to the pal deck. Felbat, amazing guy to get. Highly recommend him. Great for fighting bosses, great for fighting everything. And you see I've caught a ton of them. The main reason why I caught a ton of them is I'm still trying to find the perfect version. Once you get a whole bunch of fell bats, you can convert the fell bats, increase their stars. I'm talking about the little stars right here. And then you can make them even more powerful. Love the fell bat that I have. Give them abilities. Once you give them a really quick ability, you line up. Really awesome. The Quivern is also another you can get very early. 
This is an amazing guide to get because it's a dragon. Its food consumption is really low. Its transport is very three. It's only three, and its mining is two. This is amazing for base management, base defense, and base gathering. Quivern is an amazing guy to have. Really big though, not cool to mount because the wing gets in the way for aiming. But really, really cool to collect. You see I've gotten a whole bunch of them. The Quivern you can find right here in the bosses. Level 23, early game, easy catch. Sad part is, for technology, the Quivern, you can't ride a Quivern until later. Not till level 36. So even though you can catch him early, you can't ride them until much, much later. But they're great for base management and base defense and many other things. You can see I even still have a Quivern in my main lineup for my base. Blazemont, you can't get this till end game. It's got four mining, three kindling. Its food consumption is the one of the largest food consuming type of guys. So if you put him in your base, he's going to consume a lot of food. Its habitat is here. You can get them there as well as there's the boss version over here of the blaze month. The boss version is super easy. It's got the very little hit points, so it's not a big deal. The Hellsifer is a very uh, nighttime only guy. I think it's actually almost better than the Vanny Worm, but these guys are just so hard to find a good version. Where the Vanny Worm you can find in abundance, these guys you can only find at nighttime. And they're only spawned in this tiny little area. Where the Vanny Worm you can find all over the place. That's why the Vanny Worm is easier to catch and get a fat, swift version of it. The Astigan, which is a Mining 4 Handiwork 1. These guys are really, really great. You can catch them up here on this little tiny island, as well as it's a nighttime guy, so he doesn't go to sleep. Really easy to catch, really easy to find. Mining for, I use them as a mining team to go mine up places. The Mantis Sting is also a nighttime guy as well, Lumbering 2, Mining 3. This guy's a boss guy. I don't think there's, I guess there's a habitat over there. I didn't get, I only got the boss version one, which was right up here. This one, the Mantis Sting, here's the entrance to the cave. You run in and there's the actual mantis thing. Anubis you can also catch early uh, as a boss. I've showed it in one of my videos how to catch him early. One of the best guys for handiwork. Handiwork 4, mining 3, transporting 2. The main reason I even keep Anubis in my team is just for the handiworking 4. When I want to craft something, I come over here and I change it to my Anubis and I throw my Anubis at it and you'll go and he'll craft. That's probably the only reason why I keep Anubis in there because not super good at fighting. But he is super good at crafting stuff. Dormantide is the best guy for watering. I show how to catch a Dormantide early in one of my videos as well. Dormantide, you can catch a Dormantide early. It's not very fast at chasing you. Really easy to catch. Well, I can show that a little bit later too. Dormantide Ignis, they only spawn right here on this tiny little island. It's great for fire if you're just looking straight for fire, which is why I have one. Great at defense as well. Says Zilku, says Aku, whatever you want to call it. They only spawn up here. This is a great flying mount. You see me flying around with a Zazaku all the time. Endgame mount. You can't ride him until way later. So Zaku Aquas. This guy I've never even saw or found the habitat. The only time I actually even caught a Zazaku Aquas is when somebody was raiding. And I caught it that way. These guys are hard to find. I'm sure they only spawn in dungeons or something. I don't know where they spawned. The hardest guy it took me to find, for whatever reason, was the Grizzbolt. The Grizzbolt was the very last guy that I caught. He was on this island. I spent five hours on this island, literally clearing everything out or more, just trying to catch a Grizzbolt because I knew he spawned down here, but I couldn't catch him. And the main reason why I knew he spawned down there was the habitat. You see the habitat? And you can find the habitat when you actually fight the main tower multiple times. This one right here. When you fight this tower enough times, you can get it. Now, I know there's a bug or defect where you can catch a different one, but I only caught a real one. I haven't caught anyone the fake way. The Laleen, I can see has planting four and all these other things, but you don't even really catch a Laleen until way later because this is the end game island. Uh, by the time you actually even get up there to catch a Laleen, you probably won't need to use them anymore. Then there's the Laleen Knocked. I don't know why the Laleen Knocked. These higher level guys should have more abilities, in my own personal opinion. You can use them more, but this guy has no planting, just handiwork, gathering, and everything else. Phalaris is another type of boss, guys. You can find him right here. He's on the tiny little island. Phalaris, its food consumption is high. It flies fast, but trying to find a swift version at the point by the time you get one of these guys, you'll probably have something else as a swift version for flying. This guy also consumes a ton of food. He's got a good amount of electricity, but his food consumption alone, when you put him in your base, 
He just eats up so much food. The Shadow Beak is an amazing guy. His special ability, when he casts it, it does a ton of damage. Great at fighting. The Pilatus and the Nakamas. This guy never goes to sleep. This guy does go to sleep. Um, they're cool and all. They do a lot of damage. But because they're neutral and dark, they're not as good at tanks as the Frostilian or other type of things. The Frostilian you can catch the same way like you catch uh, Jet Dragon and all the other guys that I have videos on. The Frostilian and the Jet Dragon, as you can see, they're 110 and 111, are one of the two hardest guys to fight solo at lower level. I caught both of these guys at level 40. They're both level 50. You can catch them early. It is not easy. They were very, very tough fights, very, very hard. Now, there's one other guy that's in here that's the 137, which is the Frostilian Knight version. I don't have that version. There's, I have no idea where the habitat is for the night version for Frostilian, if it even does spawn in the world. But you would have to breed them and hatch an egg to get that one. And then there's the Jet Dragon, which I just showed at the beginning of this video of how to get them. Okay, those are all the different pals. Those are my quick review of them. When you finally get the Jet Dragon and the Frostilian, these guys are definitely worth having on your team, as well as the Shadow Beak. These three guys are some of the most powerful. Powerful Dragon, powerful Ice, powerful dark the phalaris is great for fire if you're just doing for fire but because i just use a written mount and i'm just going to show this real quick if you take this guy and if you're wondering how to catch dormantide early once you have a vanny worm and once you have poison blast the game kind of poison blast igni blast you just need these two the third ability can be whatever you want i like to put it as wing cutter and or dragon cannon all these three have the longest range and do the most amount of damage. When you come over here and you want to catch a Dormantide, you can catch a Dormantide early. Or say, for example, you wanted to catch a Verdash early. Any mounted, you can use any mounted mount. You don't have to use a Vanny Worm. You, as long as you mount your guy, come over here. And you come over to one of these like this. Even while you're inside of a boss fight, you can throw your guy, mount him up and literally just start attacking. If it's in the game, it's not, you're not bugging out or anything. And look, I've already taken him down this much hit points before he actually starts trying to attack me. Now the nice thing about Poison Blast is it does a tiny itty bitty like interrupt slash stun. So not only does it do poison damage and everything else, you can literally just hit him down like that and then throw a ball at him and catch him. Just like that. Really quick, really easy. Um, and you can do that for any of the guys. And then once, if you don't want to lose your guy, you just come over here and dismount. Pull him back. And you can catch so many guys just like that. It's, I know I'm already higher level than um, the Verdesh, but if you're trying to catch guys early, that's a way that you can do it in this game. Uh, the game was really, really fun. For me, up to trying to have a goal to catch every single pal. Now there's definitely things that because it's early access that they need to fix. They need to fix more end game stuff. I think they should add more Easter eggs for skills. I think they need to add the dungeons. They need to add a map in the dungeon. They don't have maps in dungeons. All the dungeons are basically copies of themselves just with new different skin on themselves. But that aside from all the different base management, from all the different pals you can catch, the different abilities once you catch them all it's 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 a great game for breeding everything but i compare it very similar to arc survival so some people it is comparable to another type of game but it's very similar to arc survival but very simplified for people that want to play and enjoy it so definitely definitely a fun game i highly enjoyed it definitely still work needs work because it's early access just put all this back in this guy Definitely things I need to work on, like the base. If I were to leave the game, I need to switch out my team because your guys don't eat when they are not in their actual base. What I mean by that is when you're not online, they don't eat. So I literally switch out my team completely so that I have another team in there so that when I log out of the game, these guys 
will always be in a sick state. See over here, they're depressed. Some have ulcers and fractures and more depressed. I just leave this team in here because this is my offline team. But other than that, it's it's been really fun. It's been very enjoyable to collect them all. I know I never reached the one, the level 50 mark on this particular playthrough on this particular game. But once you get to a certain point and you actually capture all the higher level guys, like the Frostilian, the Jetragon, and these other guys, um, there's nothing more to do besides breeding and trying to get the perfect pal with the higher skills and all the other abilities. So that aside, thank you for watching. Thank you for this review. And if you enjoyed this content, please feel free to hit the like button. Helps me out a ton. Helps to push out this content to other people, bring awareness to it. If you would like, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, especially what you don't like so that I can improve and make better content. If you have not already, please feel free to subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, that's okay as well. Come back once a week, once a month, check out what content I have. I've kind of completely almost stopped playing Power World. I'm still hosting the server for friends, family, and kids. Uh, and I get on to play with them. But other than that, the game has kind of fallen off for me because the end game content is not quite there for early access game. But up to how much I played it, and I'm just collecting every single guy, was extremely enjoyable. Uh, I played it extremely. I highly enjoyed it. If you're just a casual player, I guarantee you will enjoy it if you like the capturing and running around trying to collect as many guys as you can. Thank you again for watching. Thank you all for being here. And you all have a wonderful day.